Okay, we're going to kind of finish up in, in settings today and then talk about a few more basic things and then next week we'll start into some apps. Okay. Uh, last week we, we ended up in the general settings and where we left off, or what, what I wanted to go into next, was accessibility because I want to show you some of these features in accessibility. So again, if you'll go to the general settings, get, get into settings, and go to general, and then scroll down to the bottom, and go into accessibility. Hey, under accessibility, um, again, there's a lot of different uh, settings here. A couple of the uh, I, at least I think the important ones are voiceover. So I'm going to go into voiceover here. And with voiceover, what it will do is it, it will allow the, basically everything on the iPad to talk. So if, if you had a student who maybe doesn't read so well or that, uh, you can turn voiceover on. Voiceover on. Landscape. Okay. Home button to the left. Settings. Home button to the left. Settings. Okay. So now, to touch an item. I just touch an item, and it's going to speak it. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back out. I'm going to go back out. I'm going to hit my home button here real quickly to show you what effect it has overall on the iPad. Audio folder. Sixteen apps. Double cameras folder. 16 apps. Oh. Double tap to open. Okay, so it tells you. So if I want to get into, let's say I want to go to my folder. books folder Eight here. Apps. If I actually want double to get into it now, though, I have to double tap. Opening books folder. Books. iBooks. iBooks. Library. Button. Okay. Your iPad is running. Now I can tap a line of text, offer. and it will read that line of text. Aiding system, iOS, which uses multi touch Gestures, in addition, it comes with some. Okay. Your apps, and what they can, and can. If your, we, selected, if your. If we have something like this, can we take a picture? Or can we have it doing video so that kids can actually then have it reading to them? From the book that we're reading from? Um, <clears throat> if, it's got to be text, mm -hmm. but yeah. You can do picture of the book. I can do pictures of the book. I may be able to sit there. If, if, it's, if it's readable text. Now, if you just took a picture of the book and had the text there, that would treat, it would treat it as an image, not as text. Oh. So it wouldn't read that, which I think is kind of what you're asking. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. No, it wouldn't do that. Can we do that thing on this? On the iPad that we do on the iMac, the Mac, where we do the control click four and it like takes a snapshot of the screen. Great question. And the answer is yes. And then would it read it as? But no, then? because it's taking an image. A, an image. Okay. Yeah. But so real quickly, since you asked that question, to take a, a snapshot of the screen, you press the home button and the wake sleep button at the same time. I don't know if you heard it. There's a little camera snap. And so now I do have an image in my photo library. Oh, no. Oh, my card. My new book. Close. Is this the way to sleep? Where's the photo library? Composer. Home. Get back out of this. Come on. Double tap to close. The home button and the wake sleep button. That's that little button up here. App switcher. Yeah, I'm going to turn voiceover off for just a minute. Double tap. <laughs> because. Voiceover. Voiceover. Voiceover off. Thank you. <laughs> so here's this little sunflower is your photo library. And so here's that image I just took. That screenshot. Okay. So again. 
you know, if you've got some kids, you got some visual problems or reading problems, voiceover. Okay. Is, so would we have to download a book or something then? So yeah. you can't take a photograph yeah. of it, you have to download yeah. books. You, if, if you could get into a PDF format, then, then it would read that. Okay, one thing, a couple things about voiceover. We're going to turn back on for just a second. Voiceover on. Landscape. Home button to the left. Okay, you Settings. Can, you can speed up. Select the first number. Speaking rate. Speaking rate. Speaking rate. Some of the other controls are a lot more difficult voiceover. with voiceover, voiceover. turned on. Voiceover. Turned on. Landscape. 39%. Home button to the left. Settings. Alert. Important. Voice. Okay, um, here you can also turn on Pencil. typing feedback so you get some audio when you're typing. Okay. Uh, phonet, you can turn on and off phonetic pronunciation, I'd leave those on. <laughs> uh, pitch change kind of gives the inflection with, you know, as far as question marks and periods, that type of thing. And I've never turned on the compact voice, so let's hear it. Voice on. So I can keep it slowed down pretty well. Voice over on. Escape. Hey, also under accessibility, so I'm going to go back one screen. We have Zoom. Zoom magnifies the entire screen. So again, get kids with visual difficulties. It's great. Uh, so to zoom in more, to zoom in, you tap with three fingers. To zoom back out, tap with three fingers. And that's only if it's on. That's only if it's on. Four fingers to scroll when you've got it on. What's the language? I can't get it. What's that? Language it'll speak to me in French. Yeah. In which section is that in? Voiceover. In, in the voiceover. Yeah, down on your brain. Just click it on. Um, I think it's different. Those are different items that you can turn on to speak, have it speak or not. So it'll speak in French? That would be, I don't, I think that would be, well, language rotor, let's see. Try it and see. It says it's going to change the gestures used to control iPads because that would not to do. I'll I'll have I'll look at that a little bit. Back to it. All right, uh, a couple other things in accessibility. Uh, large text, so this will allow you to make text larger in the basic apps like calendar, contacts, mail, messages. Uh, again, if you get kids that see white text on black, better. it's not showing on the screen, but see on the iPad, oh, that switches that. Kelly, can you make it other colors than black on white, white on black? Um, I don't believe so. Um, speak selection on. What that will allow you to do is if you have any text, if you pull up any text, come on, and you highlight it, the first option then is to speak that text. So this is a way to, to get at least text-to-speech without having to turn on voiceover. 
Your iPad is running Apple's mobile operating system, iOS, which uses multi-touch gestures. In addition, it comes with some great apps, what Apple calls applications on the iPad, to make your life easy. Okay, so I, actually, I keep that turned on, uh, many for my grandkids, so if they get really bored real quickly, I can pull up something and have it read to them. <coughs> Assistive touch, this is more for, uh, would be for some kids with motor skill issues. Uh, but if you turn that on, basically they can create their own gestures. It also has some built-in gestures uh, to help them. So that there's kind of a lot of cool things here for kids that have some specific issues. Turn off the compact voice. So what does that assistive touch do then? It just create, it shows an image of a gesture or what? Um, what you can do is create a gesture for them and show them to do that gesture. So like your teeth are... Well, like a three finger tap in a specific location on the screen. Okay, so not just to say. No. Okay, so that's accessibility. Okay. Um, other settings, I don't know if there's anything that critical that we're going to cover this week. I don't think so. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, images, taking pictures and using the camera on the iPad. Uh, one unique thing, well, of course it's unique because this is the first iPad that had a camera. Okay. But, you know, it not only has one camera, but it ha actually has two cameras. I keep my camera apps all loaded in folders. Did we go over folders, creating folders last week? We did, didn't we? Okay. Let me make sure. So I, have, I actually have about five, five uh, folders with different types of camera photography about, apps. About making folders, if you've got something on one page that you want on another page in a folder, I, I haven't been able to slide it from page to page. But you, you, know, you get up and wiggle in here, and then what I try to do is grab on the, the opposite edge of which direction I want to drag that, and I go and just hold it right to the edge. And then drop it in. And it can be a little bit problematic sometimes. I have issues with it sometimes, but usually I just let go and then start again. And it goes okay. Which, which one then? Oh, so to jiggle, apps click and tap and just hold until they start wiggling. Okay, the basic camera app that comes with, comes on the iPad, it's just called Camera, and I use it probably 80% of the time, even though I have 8,000 other camera apps available, just because it's quick and easy. <laughs> so here I am, uh, wow, that's cool. Um, so this is using the back facing camera. Okay. Now the controls that you can't see on the big screen but you should see in the camera app itself. On the upper right hand corner there's a sw little switch button that will switch it to the front facing camera. You can switch back and forth at, at will. Oh, is that up in that top corner? Yeah, upper right hand corner. Find it. If you can't find an app, always remember if you go back. If you're on the, your first screen here, you can either swipe all the way to the right and go to your search screen, okay. and then do a search for camera. Oh, there it is. 
to take a picture with the code? Okay. Okay. Now, down on the lower right hand, there's another switch that will switch between uh, still shots and video. Okay. When you are in the still camera, you can use pinch to zoom. And pinch to zoom is just with two fingers, zoom in, spread apart to zoom in, spread to, pinch together to zoom out. But you can zoom in. This version will let you zoom back out. I'm going to switch to video mode for just a second. So I'm going to tap on the video camera. You cannot pinch to zoom in the video camera. Okay. The reason for that is, if you, if you could pinch to zoom in the video camera, the footage would be so grainy that it would, for video footage, it wouldn't work very well. Okay. Um, the iPad is not the most ideal camera for video footage. Having said that, I use it all the time. Okay. But it's just, I mean, it's hard to hold it still for one thing. If I do use it, what I'll do a lot of times is, is you know, make sure it's in my case, and then get my case set up to where I can take a usable picture with it. And I'll use other items to, to stand it up a little more. Well, our cases that we have to they slide out. No. You could prop it. You could certainly use a book or something to prop it. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Here, let me fix that. Yeah, is that better? Okay. And so then obviously, you know, you've got your record button here, so if you're in video mode, it's going to start recording video. And you get a timer on screen. And then you stop and it tucks it away in your camera roll. You switch to the still camera. Again, you just tap on the camera icon and then away it goes. Okay, if you're in the camera app and you want to see what you just shot, on the lower left hand corner, there's a little icon. This will take you directly into your camera roll. It's the same as going to photos, basically. And you can swipe <laughs> to rotate through images. How did you get to that? Where was the image? It's in that corner. It's down here in the corner. So let me get back into the camera app here. Okay, we'll come to that in just a second. All right, so again, from the camera app, lower left hand button here, it's got kind of a little thumbnail or less of your pictures. That will take you into the camera roll. And again, you just swipe right and left to go through those. If you've got video, you're going to have a play button. Is that just down where the pictures show up in the bottom? Mm -hmm. Now this doesn't look much like video because it was holding still, except for my arm. Okay. <coughs> so, again, what you can't see on the top of my screen from there, but if you'll tap on, just tap on the screen, either on a picture or on a video, it brings up some controls. On a video, it will let, it will give you a send button. And again, it's not showing up. Well, I'll come back and do the pictures. We'll let you email the video or send it in a text message or, it or send options. it to YouTube. Do you click options? Is that what you click? It's from the top. Let me go back in. Let me go back into a. Oops. Let me go back into a still image. And then we can see a little better. All right. So on a still image, uh, if you're in video, what you couldn't see on the screen before, come on, is this send button. Okay, and it would allow you to send video. Okay, how do you get there? You just tap on 
a picture. A picture. Just a single tap. Um, that brings that up. And you find that little arrow thing. So if I'm in the picture mode, again, this is anytime you see this button, a little rectangle with an arrow coming out of it, that's the send button. Can, can I add that I was trying to email a couple of pictures to a parent at the same time, and I couldn't get pictures from email. I had to go to pictures to email. Does that make sense? I couldn't mm -hmm. figure out how to attach pictures to my email. So I had to go, I had to log out, and I had to email each picture. I don't know how to email more than one picture in one single email. I don't think I, is there a way to do that? Um, let me come back to that, Okay. because I'm not sure. I have some action shots that I've hmm. taken of a friend and then sending on. Okay. And um, I'd like to send them in a single email, but um, I had to send them individually. And we'll, I, I think you can, but we might not come back to that okay. in a minute. Okay. So with, with pictures, there's all, place, all kinds of ways you can send it. You can email it, send a message. I have a question. How would you do it for Facebook? For Facebook? Yeah. Um, <laughs> if, if you went into Facebook on the iPad mm -hmm. and oh. went there to add an image, mm -hmm. it would pull up your library here. There's a place to add it. Then you just select it. And then you would just go from Yeah. Okay, next to the whoops. Next to the send button. Get back in, thank you. Next to the send button, we've got the trash icon. So if I don't want this image anymore, tap the trash icon. Do you want to delete the photo? Yes. Now again, you can't see my icons on the big screen here, but you get the same thing for video. So I can delete video. All right, so here's my picture again. So again, a tap. Here's the trash icon. That's the same. Then delete video. Now with with still images, you can do now some rudimentary editing. Okay, so I tapped on the edit button. Let me cancel that. So here's the edit button. Tap on the edit button. Now you see down at the bottom I have four more buttons. If, if this is a picture of somebody and they had red eyes, I can use the red eye tool. I can use the enhance tool to enhance the color. I can also rotate the image. And where's that? Sorry. <laughs> okay. okay so when I, tap, when I tap on my image and I get my buttons up here, yeah. tap on the edit button. Okay. And then the controls are down here on the bottom. What's Rotate, that? enhance, red eye, and crop. So for cropping, I hit crop. I get these handles. Let's say I only wanted this part of the image. I select it. And then I get a crop button up here. I hit crop. And that's my new image. Does it get rid of the old image? Get rid of what? When you crop, or does it keep the old one too? It, it gets rid of the old one. I was going to say, technically it doesn't. Well, you can revert to the original one. Yeah, you can revert. You can always revert. Okay. Um, let me back out of this, back out of the camera. And I'm going to go into the photos section here. And again, this is where all photos get stored. So this is kind of back where I was. But if I have a set of images. Okay, now is that a separate icon? That's that What's that? Flowers. The sunflower. Yeah, that's oh, the sunflower okay. icon. So I have a, a set of, I have an album here that has pictures of some of my grandkids. So if I want to create a slideshow, I'm going to flip this around so I can quit doing that. Okay. I just hit the slideshow button. You're off. I get options for transition, dissolve or not. 
I want to play music, I can choose music from my library here, start slideshow. How do you create an album? Like I've just got a few pictures here that are really important. But... Basically what you can do is if you have photos together, I'm going to have to come back on that because I haven't. <laughs> Usually when you import a bunch of photos, it's going to create an album automatically. And then for f and then you should be able to drag some yeah. in. It also creates events, but I haven't done it for a while, so I've got to come back. So like um, pictures that I have here are just when I touched album, it said the camera roll. So that's already organized into an album. Mm -hmm. So how could you organize albums from that because they're like... Can you divide up that album? That, that's what I've got to look at. Oh, okay. I haven't done it since, about since I got this, so that's we'll come back to that. When those are imported, that means it's come from another source other than here. How did you import it? Um, there are several ways to import. Okay. Uh, the, you can attach computer to uh, iPhoto and import photos from your iPhoto library. Uh, you can email yourself photos and put them in that way. Apple does have a kit. Um, looks like this actually that will allow you to. So if you got uh, an SD card in your camera and you take pictures, uh, plug this into the, the port and plug the SD card in. Or it actually has a USB one too. So if you have photos on a USB stick or a jump drive. Same thing. That kit, I think, runs about and that didn't come with thirty bucks. bucks. It does not. It's this kit's about thirty bucks. Oh, it's not a regular SD card. Or regular it, it, this is a re it, no. It it's a device that goes from the iPad connector to an SD card slot. Can you just email yourself pictures? What's that? Can you just email pictures yourself. Pictures? Yeah, you can email pictures in, and when you do that, then you just tap on. See if I have any pictures in any emails here. Probably, probably not. <coughs> but you can always just save uh, your iPod and your yeah. iPhone. If you if you do get emails with images though, you just tap on the <laughs> tap on the picture, mm -hmm. and it'll come up with some options. One will be to send it your camera roll, and you can just save your camera. There is also an app, and I, I'll have to look and see if it's free or not. I think it is, but I can't remember. It's called Air, or no, it's not called Air, right? Uh, find it here. And this is how I do it more often than not. Uh, Actually, it's the bad thing about having 18 million target apps. Oh, PhotoSync. Here it is. So this is an app called PhotoSync. Okay, and I'll check and see what the price is on it. But there's a piece that you load on your computer, a little server piece. But what that will allow you to do is, so if I have my computer up and running here, what I can do is I can select whatever images or videos and tell it to sync, and tell it to sync selected. And then I could send these images to my computer. I could also send it to my iPhone. Or if I have a Dropbox account, I can send it to my Dropbox account. Do you have to have like a USB thing plugged in or does it do all wireless? No, this is all wireless. They're together. Yeah. Is Dropbox secure? It's not secure, is it? It is? Uh, okay. It's pretty secure. Which is the one that's not? There's one that's not secure. Is it the cloud? Is the cloud not secure? Well, the cloud is all kinds of services. Uh, but I, Dropbox is pretty secure, in my opinion. 
So like people can't access my Dropbox. Okay. Not unless you share things with them. Okay. okay. Um, as you take one thing with the uh, <coughs> camera app and the photo app, photos app, is you can tell it to detect faces. Actually, you can't tell, but it will detect faces. So if you start taking a bunch of images of your students, it would start grouping those images together of the student, and then it would allow you to name uh, that that group. Where does it, where does it, and it kind of does that automatically. What's the photo sync Anytime. <laughs> okay. So it's just a it's a buck ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. What's the? Would you say something? All right. Um, we're out of time. Okay. Um, questions. Okay. Supposed to remind me at the beginning. Here, let me pass around a piece of paper. Did we sign last time? Whose job was that? That was my job. I forgot. Sign for last week on one side and this week on the other. Next week we're going to cover splash top in detail.